Hey everybody, my name is Theo Bennett and I am one of the tutors here for MCAT Self Prep. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through my CARS journey and ultimately how I was able to improve my overall CARS score from a 124 to a perfect 132 on the exam, leading to an overall eight point increase on the CARS section for the MCAT. Just to give you some background, so I took the MCAT back in May of 2019 and I ultimately scored a perfect 528 on the exam. And I was pretty shocked because I don't really necessarily think of myself as one of those super freak genius people. Um, but for the MCAT, at least, I spent hundreds of hours devoted to really understanding the content for the MCAT. Uh, but more importantly, I spent hundreds of hours trying to understand the philosophy and the psychology behind the AMC. So I really tried to understand how the double AMC thinks and the logic they use to try to understand um, how to choose the answers that they want me to pick. Kind of like picking the answers that the teacher wants you to pick on an exam. And overall, I think that really contributed to me jumping eight points on the car section. To give you some more background, I would never really consider myself a great reader. Um, I don't think I have a photographic memory or perfect reading comprehension. Um, and in fact, I think the reading section was the worst on my ACT exam, for example. Uh, so I, I don't think I have a supernatural power when it comes to, you know, understanding and, and deciphering literary, literary text. Uh, but overall, it was that understanding of the AMC logic that, that helped me get to the score that I wanted. Because I don't have great reading comprehension, uh, my initial problem with cars was I just would run out of time. Uh, I did pretty bad on a lot of my early tests when it came to cars, uh, just because Again, I kind of couldn't break through that barrier of finishing on time. And so I would try to rush through the passages, rush through the questions, and it just felt out of sync. I think my problem really arose from talking with friends who had taken the MCAT before and kind of taking their advice as opposed to figuring out what worked for me. So the first month really of my CARS focus, uh, I spent reading the passages way too fast. So I tried to read the passages between three and four minutes because that's what my friends told me was sort of the you know, test taking pace that you wanted to maintain. So that way you had enough time to get to the questions. And so I was kind of between a rock and a hard place because I would start reading the passage too fast for me. So I really didn't understand anything that I was reading. And then by the time I got to the questions, I had to spend a ton of time going back and forth and back and forth between the questions and the passage uh, because I didn't have that underlying comprehension of the passage to begin with. So after about a month of struggle, uh, I just said, you know, to heck with it. I'm going to try and figure out my own path. So I decided to really focus on my reading comprehension uh, because I kind of realized that fundamentally the car section specifically is just a reading comprehension test. So my strategy was at the start twofold. Um, what I tried to do was read one car's passage a day, maybe one or two, um, and alternate every other day between either reading those passages fast um, at the test taking pace or slow. So on the days when I would read the passages slow, what I mean by that is I would take a ton of time. I would read much slower than my natural reading pace. I would give myself as much time as I needed to take breaks, to reread sentences, even reread whole paragraphs. And what I would do is try to test myself periodically throughout the passage um, on what I was reading. So try to regurgitate the information that I had just read to check with myself if I really understood it. Overall, this would take me between seven or eight minutes. So again, much slower than my friends were telling me to read. Uh, but over time, I was able to almost train my brain to realize that when I'm reading a car's passage, I'm reading it to fully comprehend it. Then over time, I really tried to meet in the middle, right? So I would try and on the days that I was reading fast, I would try and retain more and more and more. Um, and then on the days where I was reading really slow, again, between seven and eight minutes, I would try to gradually speed that up so that I was trying to, again, maintain the maximum retention, but do that faster and faster. And ultimately, I tried to meet in the middle where I was reading a passage between you know four and five minutes now, but after about a month or two months of work, uh, I was finally retaining about 85% of the passage when originally, if I was reading at that same pace, I would retain maybe 65%. Uh, 
Uh, so overall, I mean, I wasn't retaining 100% of what I could have retained if given all the time in the world, but it was good enough so that that way when I got to the questions, I actually understood what was going on. Okay, so now that I got the reading comprehension problem out of the way, I ran into two more roadblocks. And those roadblocks I feel like are experienced by everyone. So the first one was that cars passages were really boring, right? We're reading about, you know, 17th century French art philosophy or whatever. And I don't know, at least for me, that's just not in my wheelhouse, right? I'm, I'm kind of a typical pre-med where I just really like science and, and helping people. And so I didn't really see how those, those topics had to do with medicine at all. And so I just, I just wasn't invested in it. So I kind of came up with two tricks uh, to at least fake enthusiasm and also get me out of that rut when I found myself drifting off and, and not really focusing on cars. So the first thing that I did was when I recognized that maybe it had been a paragraph since I really last paid attention or I just found my mind wandering a little bit, what I would do is I would have a mental reset. And so all that involved was just staring at the wall behind the computer. So I'd just stare at it for like five seconds. Maybe I'd close my eyes. Um, and then after those five seconds were over, I, made, I mentally recommitted to focusing on the passage. So when I jumped back in, I would maybe jump back to the beginning of that paragraph that I had skimmed over um, and then try to, you know, fully jump in again and just allow myself to, to let go of that. The other thing that I did to really help myself with boring passages is I would almost read uh, in my head like I was reading to a six-year-old, right? So I would read with a lot more emotion and excitement and um, try to trick my brain into being more emotionally invested in the passage than I actually care about. So this kind of just involves, you know, reading those same sentences, but again, just with more emphasis, uh, because that really helped the themes and the important details jump out because it was more exciting um, when I was reading it in a more exciting uh, attitude. And so therefore I was able to, to catch those smaller details and big details as well. Now, the next roadblock that I ran into, um, and this, again, I feel like is experienced by everyone, but the, some of the Cars passages were just super dense and, and really complex. And some of the sentences especially, uh, I, just, I just couldn't understand. Oftentimes these were passages about philosophy or um, you know, something that was almost written that I felt like was at a PhD level uh, where I just didn't understand history or art um, in that same way. Uh, and so what I did in those situations is, again, I just let go, right? I, when I would come to sentences that were so, so complicated that I couldn't understand them, I just allowed myself to not understand it and move on. And ultimately this helped, right? If I, if I didn't understand an entire paragraph, I would probably still go back and try and pull one or two sentences that um, I could understand from that paragraph. But if it was a one sentence specifically that was very complicated, um, if I just moved past it, I found that the AMC didn't really test me on that because ultimately the AMC's questions are gonna be for about the 30th percentile test taker, right? So someone who's gonna score about a 490 on the exam, which again, is, is very hard to do. Um, but all that is to say that most of the questions that they're gonna ask you can be answered by anyone. Um, and especially they're going to ask you questions about kind of the bigger picture details um, and, and not about those really dense sentences. And so if you just let go of those sentences, I, I hope that you'll find like I found that uh, ultimately it's, it's not a problem. So after those roadblocks were passed, I, I was still running into the issue of focusing on the wrong things when it came to cars passages. Again, I heard advice from friends who I really respected, who did really well on the car section, uh, that I should highlight uh, in the passage, right? They wanted me to highlight sort of the key themes or um, important names, um, really anything that I deemed necessary. Uh, and initially I felt like this was, was helpful, but, but ultimately I ran into question after question where I was getting them wrong because I would focus on that sentence that I highlighted but ignore the sentence afterwards that the AAMC wanted me to focus on uh, because I kind of had this uh, confirmation bias almost to focus on the sentences that I thought were important as I was reading it the first time. So 
when I made the switch to not highlighting, I found that my score improved a lot, actually. Again, I'm not saying that this works for everyone, right? It obviously worked for my friends who did well previously uh, because they highlighted. But at least for me, I found highlighting to almost be a distraction when it came to cars. Now, I highlighted a lot on the, all the other sections, but with cars specifically, I just wasn't good enough at focusing on the, the details that the AAMC wanted me to focus on. And so therefore, my highlighting was almost a hindrance as opposed to a help. Along those lines, I initially tried to focus on understanding one main theme for each passage. This really helped me at the beginning because it helped me kind of hone in and, and focus on, on those kind of reoccurring threads. Uh, but over time, I realized that the AMC, while they did care about the main ideas for some questions, they also wanted me to pick up on subtleties. And so I stopped thinking about my goal when it came to reading a passage as just a goal of understanding the main theme. But instead, I switched over to a mode where I was really looking for the, the multiple themes that were occurring, kind of like a, a painter painting with broad strokes, right? I was looking for each of those broad strokes, and I was almost trying to find a theme for every paragraph, and I really split the questions down into two categories. So there were certain questions that focused on the specifics in the passage, and then other questions that were more focused on those broader themes. For the specific questions, those were often a little bit more simple for me. I would just try to go back to the passage specifically to the area that they were referring to. Um, and at least for me, I had the problem of overthinking a lot. And so these were questions that weren't as hard to overthink. But for the broader, more thematic questions, those were very easy for me to overthink. And so what I tried to do is, again, focus on those, you know, the broad strokes that the author is painting with. But I also tried to picture the author, right? I tried to picture us kind of having a, a dinner party and the author talking to me for, you know, four to five minutes. I tried to picture what they would look like, right? What political party they would affiliate with, what they would be wearing. Um, and this at least helped me get a better, kind of more holistic sense of who the author was and what they would agree with. Because again, a lot of the questions um, were throwing new situations at you and saying, how would the author agree with this new unforeseen situation? So finally, and I would almost argue most importantly, I made the switch from trying to find the right answer to instead choosing the least wrong answer. And what I mean by that is pretty much our whole life, right? From the, all the standardized tests that we took growing up, um, certainly all of the science midterms that you're having to take for your prereqs for medical school, and, and even finals, they're conditioning us to choose the right answer. And so basically, if you approach a science midterm, right, and you've done the homework, you really understand the material, once you read that given question, you basically already know the right answer, right? So if the question is, you know, what's the powerhouse of the cell, right? You already know that the answer is mitochondria. And so if that's a, a four part multiple choice test, um, basically, your job is just to find mitochondria uh, in one of the answer choices. But what the AMC wants you to do is almost the opposite of what we've been conditioned, right? Instead of looking at those answer choices and looking for the one that you like the most, what they want you to do is they want you to pick the right answer by eliminating three answer choices instead of choosing the, the best answer. And so what I did, and I really, I had to force myself to do this, is I would only choose answers by eliminating three answer choices. At least for me, and I would argue for, for most of the students that I've tutored, uh, we're pretty good at getting rid of the worst two answers. Of course, sometimes you eliminate the right answer, and, you know, as the first answer choice that you eliminate. Um, but as a general rule, we can eliminate uh, the two worst answers. So then it comes down to that final 50-50, right? where we've got two answer choices, both of them seem pretty good, you could kind of make an argument for either one, right? And so what we do is we choose an answer by saying, I like, if we're choosing between, let's say, A and C, we say, I really like A for this and this reason, and I don't like C for this and this reason, right? But again, that feeds into our confirmation bias, right? We chose, because we've been conditioned, we already chose the answer that we wanted to pick, on that first pass through, and now we're just justifying it to ourselves. But what the AMC is gonna do instead is they're going to have an answer choice, 
that seems kind of weird, right? It, it doesn't really seem right, um, but it's not technically wrong, right? And so they're gonna have one answer choice that is simultaneously more correct, right? It's closer to what we think of as the sort of capital T truth, uh, but it's also more wrong in the sense that maybe it has a word or a phrase that, that really kind of goes against what the author was saying. And so if you have focused on your reading comprehension in the beginning, you've gotten over the fact that some of the passages are gonna be really boring and some of them are gonna be very dense and you've developed strategies to, to conquer those roadblocks, you get down to this final hurdle in the questions of forcing yourself to choose the least wrong answer. And so what I would do in that final 50-50 is instead of giving reasons why I liked A and why I liked C in, those, in that final 50-50, instead I would almost become like a lawyer and I would choose basically arguments against each answer. So against A and against C and whichever one had a more compelling argument against it, I would eliminate it. And then my answer choice would just be the one that I didn't eliminate, right? And so... I would choose answers by eliminating three answer choices. And again, oftentimes these went against what I would have picked as the right answer, but it was the answer that the AMC wanted me to pick. And so once I made that final change, that was, for me at least, the biggest game changer when it came to cars, and I saw my score improve a lot. So I, I really hope that advice helps. You know, the whole reason that I'm a tutor for the MCAT is I just really love helping students achieve their potential. And I've seen success when people have implemented these strategies really diligently. I've seen students, I've, I've worked with almost 100 students now, and I've definitely seen students improve their car score, you know, four, six, even eight points in, in a week or two. Uh, so the transformation can be pretty dramatic, but you have to be open and willing to be flexible when it comes to the way that you approach the MCAT. You have to be willing to try out new things um, and, and see what sticks, see what works for you. Because Honestly, some of these strategies might not help you. And so if that's the case, just disregard them and, and seek out other advice. Um, I have a lot of other strategies as well uh, that I'm more than happy to help share with you. Um, and so if you're interested in tutoring uh, through MCAT Self Prep, please just reach out and, and use the links in the description below. And we'll be able to you know, meet one-on-one -on -one with you uh, to get a, a free consultation. And so if you like this, uh, I mean, feel free to share it with your friends because really our goal at MCAT Self Prep is to really disrupt the entire MCAT prep industry. Uh, we want to give you as much information and as much test taking strategies as we can literally for free. So uh, message me if you're interested and we can get something started.